Hey everyone, uh, you're going to find out today in this video about MS Access SQL. You're going to find out that how to do an in, make an insert statement in, in Access, how to update the table in Access, how to uh, trade the table in Access, and how to select from a table in Access, all using the SQL, uh, the SQL language, structured query language, and you're going to learn about a dynamic array, adding an element to an array. So I do have a table already created. It's called users. So I'm going to add a user to my table called Eric. Now this user is not in there. So um, and actually you can say that this is a video I did previously and it's creating a login form. I have to enter. When I enter, when I'm registering, I'm entering a table for I'm adding a table for the uh, the enter value here, Eric. So I'm going ahead, OK, and bang. So then, OK, correct. Now I'm coming to my entry form. Now entry form, I'm going to say uh, I'm adding each item to actually an array. So I'm redimensioning the array each time I'm adding an element. So one, three, and this is real simple down here I'm creating a total of each item five and you can see by this by adding making your own form okay make your own form and add to it now I'm going to add 16 to the table and add all these entries you can find out how you can you kind of mold this into your application you have a certain application mold the same fundamentals I encourage you to get the database on VBA how to dot com and you can get the, the get the database I work with here now uh, when I click end are you sure to want to quit I get a message box based on my answer yes I'm going ahead and entering my values and I'm updating my number to 16 where it's uh, where the values Eric let me show you the the table here okay in the table Eric the total wages are 16 okay wages can be whatever field name you want now I'm also when I refresh this I should have another table sitting here somewhere in here called Eric and in that table I have all my values okay now the code behind this let's see the code behind this uh, is quite detailed but I'm sitting at some modular level variables called uh, I'm prefixing with an M to symbolize that they're module and I'm saying the total score is going to be a double variable because I want to hold a decimal value to in here my username is going to be also a, it's going to be a string it's going to be module level and then uh, my some to uh, increment my counter okay for my array the answers okay it's plural because there are probably multiple answers here then an array which I'm going to dimension as a string it's going to be because it can hold anything really I could make it a, a string of numbers if I want to just declare it as a uh, make it a integer value if I wanted to but I'm choosing a string and I'm putting the open and close parentheses on here okay it's real important for an array when the form loads I'm actually setting the uh, the the check value enabled to true okay I'm setting the v modular level variable to str user and that's going to be my login and I'm going to create a table based on that Okay, create a table based on that username. That's why I said, well, when I create a table called Eric, I'm going to um, going to name it, name that name. I'm, using, I'm saying this is my function. The function of this is going to create a table. <clears throat> Excuse me. Down here, I have my function, create table, table name. And it's going to end up as a Boolean value. So yes or no, it's great or not great. And I'm going to here and I'm creating a table, table months. Okay, create table. Here's my statement right here. Create table. 
whatever the table name is, my username, and my field entry. And I'll make it a double field. Okay. I don't really have to name it as uh, the data type number or what type of number. And you can Google the create statement axis, use the regular syntax for the SQL, SQL syntax, and you can, you can add that. Uh, this is kind of cleaning it up. Okay, clean up, uh, clean up the comma at the end, and then I'm going to execute this. And I could use the connection object on the current current project, the current project I'm working with, to execute the SQL the SQL string. And if my error is nothing, the create table is true. If it's not nothing, that means I didn't create the table. <laughs> okay. Now onwards. When the form opens up, I'm going to have the login form, and then I'm going to have various other elements in here. I have a BTN check. Whenever I enter a value in the in my box, let's see when I enter a value in my. Uh, I wonder if I pull up this year form here. Excuse, me. it's like dilly dally around. Well, it's not that important, but let's see if I can do it. My entry form here it is. Bang. Okay. <clears throat> so this is called this is called BTN check. When I click this button, I'm adding some items to an array. So if it's numeric, I'm checking that the value is a numeric value. Go ahead and add it to the array. Here's my total score. And I'm going to increment my total score. So I have something at the very end that I can stick in the box down here. Or I say totals. Okay, it's going to be, it's going to increment that counter, that value right there. So then I'm going to say I want that value to change all the time. So that's going to be uh, at each time I click that checkbox. If I want to do format it, I can unrim this. If format is cursy, I'm adding this item to a list box. And here I'm saying, okay, give me a list box. That's the column count is one. The I can set this at design time or at uh, run time, whatever you want to do. Okay, I prefer to set it right here. If the uh, count is zero, then go ahead and add. That's a, the first iteration around. I'm adding column header of that. This is real important. Uh, read dim preserve. Okay, if you're having a dynamic array, you want to read dimension the array each time around. That's why I have this modular level incrementer here, so I can increment this here array. Uh, by one each time around and it knows because as the form stays open the scope is uh, the scope is maintained throughout the whole lifetime of the form okay so so I have the module level variable module level incrementer and I increment the array by one and then I'm adding the result and then I increment the array uh, I add the, the value to the array again and I'm incrementing by one, so one, two, three, four, five, and if that person enters something other than, than a number, numbers only, please. Okay, at the end, the end of it, are you sure you want to quit? Okay, well, you can read that. Uh, in case INTN, I'm, I'm getting my answer back, so I'm storing the value, how many values are in the array, in this variable right here, int answers, and I'm saying I want to split this. Okay, you can use this here split function if you want. If you have more than one columns, you could split. That's something that other languages use split, and that's new with Access 2000. And on up, you can definitely use it right where you're probably where you're at. And then I'm using this insert. This is an insert. It's like the pen query okay the append query in access okay we're using the insert statement insert into the table your user table into that field what value 
the value of the whatever's in the array. Okay, I'm doing each value. I'm adding to the table. I'm inserting into the table. At the and then I'm using the current DB dot execute. I'm using that object right there, the connection object of the current database to execute my SQL string. Really, really simple. And then I'm going at the very end end of the process. I'm inserting my end result. I'm up using the update statement because I already have the username in the table. I'm updating the uh, the total wages or the total score. The total score where username is this. So, and again, this is we're not using any normalization practices here uh, but you can get the point because there are a lot of different concepts here and I'm trying to focus on all of them at once. I encourage you to go on out to vbahowto.com and get the get the database okay and look at it study and apply it to your own situation. You can get a lot out of what's what's in here. There's a lot of nuggets in here. At the very end, I'm just doing some cleanup procedures, closing out forms, etc. Okay, and that's going to do it for the for this video. I'm out of time, and uh, but I do encourage you to come down to vbahowto.com and get the video. Also, rate and subscribe to this uh, to this channel. Thanks for, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.